Hello. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you too. <laughs> so can you hear the baby all right? Yes, you sure? yes, we can hear it. Okay. My last name is Sakura. Isakura. Oh, my, my students call me Somali. <laughs> it's, it's easier. <laughs> yes. So it will be from, sorry, at 2 until 2.55, right? Yes. 2.50, okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I'll try yes, to and this is the last session. So, you know, if you go over a few minutes, it's not a big deal, but. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me see when you. Yeah, I think you can. Okay, welcome to the very last session of the day of our Literacy Matters Chapter 3 conference. Um, you are in session Writing Solutions for Writing Issues with Omali Isakura. She has 20 years of experience in education. She earned a Bachelor of Arts in Communication and a Master's Degree in Educational Leadership with background in Literacy and School Community Relations. She started her career as a bilingual and dual language teacher. Her experience in education has taken her to various district roles, such as elementary interventionist, district instructional coach, and specialist for the multilingual department. 
Her passion for education and academic excellence has only grown to inspire her to continue her career in school leadership as an administrator. She holds accreditations in program initiatives such as Dual Language, Abydos, Project GLAD, Sheltered Instruction, School Redesign, PBIS, and Professional Learning community, Communities. Welcome, Amali. Thank you so much. I'm very happy and excited to be here with you guys today. Um, for teachers who commit to learn and, 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 and put in practice so many uh, opportunities um, on a Saturday, I mean, I take that very, very seriously. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I'm going to try to make this session very interactive. Um, we're going to share a lot of writing activities as Ms. Um, Be Becker, Becker, Michelle, as Michelle said, um, I'm very passionate about writing and I, I try to, you know, do as much as I can in my own campus and in all the uh, other places I have been, especially sharing um, my, my experience and expertise in different things that I have learned through my years in, in, in elementary and in, in, in education. So I don't see your faces, but that's okay. <laughs> I understand it's the last session of the day. So just, just if you want, I would love to know a little bit my audience. So if you can please um, tell me, you don't have to do it. You can rename yourself and you put the grade level before that, that you know, that will give you an idea, give me an idea of um, what is the grade levels of my audience. It's the more, you know, present. And then um, you keep your microphone mute and whenever you want to participate, please know that this is an open session and you're more than welcome to use, you know, share comments or, or ask questions. If you can, it's not any, uh, you know, in any means mandatory, but if you can, I, I would love to have your video on so I can see your face and your reactions and you can ask me questions, just if you can, no, no problem. And last but not least, I will appreciate if you can, for the last, for the next 50 minutes, if you just can, um, you know, be an active participant in this session. You will, you will, you will enjoy. So let me see um, before starting this session. Um, I think I have teachers here. I just want to know grade levels. So uh, that tells me. I mean, do I have anybody um, secondary here, or is just elementary? You can use the chat box if you want to. Also. I see third, kinder, fifth. Oh, we have a uh, middle school, seventh, fifth, um, in instructional coaches, kinder, high school. Wow, great. We have everybody, everybody's here. Great. Perfect. First grade. Okay, let me go and just go ahead and get it started. Let me minimize this. Okay, the agenda for the, uh, the session today will be just talking about effective writing routines. Uh, although you will see some um, elementary um, modeling in this session, that is something that definitely can be applicable in any level that you are. Just for, of course, you, we just modify the skills uh, and the content. But uh, for example, we'll talk about a protocol to facilitate writing development and it's called um, or name 311. And I put that name just, I wanted to see, okay, when, when we are in an emergency and we call 911, we get that immediate response, right? When we are teaching writing and we want some a quick and and an intentional uh, response or development, they, they, then we can use writing 311. Um, we are going to use uh, two model lessons, one for um, intermediate grade levels, fourth grade, and the other lesson will be a primary first grade. But those uh, routines can definitely be applied to any grade level. So we are going to start with your um, talking about writing with purpose, what that means and what is it? Because as writers, we always need to focus on what is my purpose for writing in a specific, uh, you know, um, product. Uh, I need to think about my message. What is it that I want to write about? What, what is the message that I want to send to my audience? 
I also need to think about who I'm writing for or with. I need to see what is my audience at this time and who are you writing for? And then last but not least, the ideas. What are the main things you want the reader to know about in that writing piece specifically? So um, when, when we present these three uh, points to our students uh, in regards of any writing piece or any writing development that they are practicing or doing, they will probably be more focused and intentional about the product that they are going to do or write. So let me present and introduce to you Writing 311. Um, when we think about writing, we have to put all the different levels of support in place, right? It's it's a process and we all understand that writing is a process that takes, you know, time and have to be very intentional about what we want us to, our students to um, understand. So think about this, for example, the five levels of support. We have the model writing in which the teacher is modeling specific skills we want the students to learn and practice. And then we have the shared writing in which we are, you know, listening to a student's ideas, but we're taking the control in which what we want, you know, the writing to be. Then we have the interactive writing in which the, the teacher and the students are, you know, collaborating to present any writing um, idea or create any writing piece. The guided writing is very, very intentional as well. We are guiding a specific uh, uh, pieces of the writing process in which we want the students to learn and practice more. And last but not least, at the level of support, we have the independent writing in which we give the students the opportunity to practice independently any of the supports that they are having, you know, practicing or co creating with the teacher. All of these components are present in writer's workshop, right? The level one until the level three, one, two, three, are approached as a mini lesson. We take the control and we, we kind of uh, present it to the students versus level four and five are more in which we give students the opportunity to write and develop that during writing time. Interactive writing versus shared writing, what that means. Uh, of course, interactive writing, students and teachers talk and the students and teachers write. We both are doing it together. Uh, in this part could be, uh, when, when we look at primary, of course, it is more guided. But when you look at more uh, you know, intermediate or, or advanced, students, uh, teachers provide ideas, students are writing at the same time. Versus shared writing means that students, we are getting ideas, we, we take ideas from the students and then the teachers put it in paper and write it together and use it as a model. Teacher writes with the entire text in front of the students doing share writing, right? And then we request some, some, some ideas or input from the students in, in regards of any of the aspect of the writing that we're producing. <clears throat> we just want to get, you know, and increase and expand their expertise. So think about for that moment, uh, uh, looking into a focus when we're doing short writing. Uh, and I have done it in, even in intermediate and, and middle school. And it's very, very powerful when you see uh, the students responding to this. For example, you, you get a focus point. That could be a, a word choice. You may talk about or, or model specifically during that short writing sentence combination, you, your focus may be transitional phrases, you want that paragraph structure, or you want to go into more grammar and spelling into that piece. And that will help students understand and get those ideas and use it as a model. And then, of course, be able to make those revisions when they have to do it by theirself, themselves. So writing 311 is a protocol that uh, it doesn't need to happen uh, consecutively in the days. You may you know, decide which days of the week you put it in practice. Some of, of my, my teachers that have done it, uh, they do it as an intervention in a small group, and you can also do it as a whole group, okay? So during day one until day one, two, and three is when you introduce a skill, 
you use any mentor text to you know offer support and let the students can zoom and then you have that opportunity to do some short writing because that's you taking the control in what you really want and that is specifically the teaching of that skill that you plan for the protocol then day four is when you get that time for guided writing, coaching, conferring, letting the students develop their pieces in day five they share. So I'm gonna give you some examples. Please let me know if you have any questions so far, okay? Day one, for example, you introduce the skill, you get a tick any, at any level of, you know, you, um, that you are teaching part of your curriculum, you get that skill, that tick. And, and, and writing 311 is just a protocol. You can put it in practice with any curriculum you're teaching in any of the part of the either writers, or, you know, within the writer's workshop. So what is it that you want the child, the group, your class to learn and work on? So you get that skill, you take that tick, and you develop your lesson. That's your day one. So I'm going to show you an example, and this is a uh, in the Spanish a bilingual classroom. We were working on some uh, syllables and then we, it, we were doing some grammar, specifically with the uh, sounds gago, gu, ge, gi. And we wanted the students to practice uh, using those uh, syllables in, in the correct form. So they want Day one, we introduced the skill. We told the students we're doing this piece in grammar and we're uh, showing the students uh, the sounds of gago, gu, gegi, and how they write it correctly. Day two, so before going back, day one was my minute lesson. I taught that, that was my lesson. Uh, what I had on my curriculum, I needed to uh, teach it, right? And I explained it to the student what that means. Day two, I use mentor text to model the sounds that we priorly taught. So I really wanted the students to practice with those sounds, gage, gi, gogu. So I use a mentor text that has several sounds and words using that sound. So teachers uses a mentor text to notice the skills that we taught. It's kind of, um, I don't know if you have heard about Jeff Anderson, invitation to notice. So we wanted the students to, uh, we want to, the students to be invited to notice those specific skills. So we, we read a book, the students, and, and we did it together. We did a read aloud and we start pointing out the words uh, that has, for example, Roger. In this case, in Spanish, we have golpea, fingiendo, gesto. So we, we, we have several words in that. What did we, we did at that moment, we, the teacher displays the sentence and the read aloud, right? And we ask the students, what do you notice? And then of course the students say, hey, I see the word Roger and Roger has the sound, you know, in this case, J. Okay, so the teacher honors the student's um, acknowledgement of that word. If the student doesn't name, then the teacher help us. Okay, it's very guided. Uh, what is this word, in this case, Roger, doing in this passage or in this sentence? And then we kind of talk about that word and how the sound it is. Then we continue reading. We have several words. We uh, highlight all the words that we're using that specific sound or skills. And then you let the students practice. They get the, read, um, the readings. They get several different books. It doesn't need to be actually my own, the book that I use for the modeling, but any books. And they start acknowledging those words having different sounds you get a lot of ideas once the students are saying, hey, I found this word with this sound. I find this word with that sound. And remember, this is just that particular skill. It can be, it can happen at with any other skill that you're teaching, adjective, adverb, any, any skill at that, at the level that you're um, doing it. Then we come day three. And during day three, we teach the students write together. We do a share writing. I get ideas from a student based on the words that we priorly uh, learn, different words, and then we create a read uh, a share writing. And then as I write and get with ideas coming from the students, I'm adding um, and I'm highlighting the words that are using the sounds that we have been learning. That's day three. Then it comes day four. Day four, 
I have a either a guided writing, I pull a small group, or I take up my opportunity to confirm with the students. And I do it, and you know, some of the students may be writing independently, finishing their own piece. Uh, other students, I, you know, um, walking around the classroom one on one conferring with them and then another uh, group I may probably pull a group and do a guided writing. In this case, the guided in guided writing lessons then refers to the essential nature of the support provided by expert teachers while the students write and this is coming from Sharon Gibson. I have this video but uh, um, I'm going to skip the video at this time. Um, then, of course, you walk around and you start seeing what the writing pieces, you know, what the students are writing and making um, uh, revisions if you need to. And then, of course, last day, students share. It's, it's a kind of share time, but it's also a way to assess if they really put in practice the skills that you taught. So you create a sharing environment for students to share. They can share each other at their tables. They can come uh, to the front if it's elementary and share aloud to the class. And you can also uh, take any type of assessment at that moment. So it's, uh, it's a five days protocols. Some teachers may combine, do one to three in, in one day, and then four and five in other, depending on the amount of time that you have. It doesn't need to happen. It's very, very intentional in the skills that I want to teach. And, and I'm not changing anything about the lesson. I'm just changing the approach I'm taking for students to develop writing. As the semester or the classes goes, you may be modifying this protocol, putting them together, and that allows the student to be able to have more time for writing. Do we have any questions so far? Let me check the chat box. Do we have any? I, ha I see we have a specialist here. PK. Questions, please let me know if you have questions, okay? You may uh, feel free to put those questions in the chat box. The next part I'm going to show you, and since we have, you know, high school and middle school audience, uh, I wanted you to take the approach and try to see how you can put it in practice at your level. Because in this case, we're using nursery rhymes, right? Uh, it could be a video, it could be a song, it could be any uh, 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 any literature that you put in practice or you wanted to teach, you can definitely uh, use it for this protocol. So let me let me share a little bit about what the research says about um, nursery rhymes, right? And, and I have to uh, take um, a gift credits to Gretchen Bernabe, who is, uh, I took this idea from her text, um, text structures for nursery rhymes. Uh, young readers and writers have a developmental need for rhythm and rhyme. You have to, so because we use them, especially at that young age, then we have to um, make sure that the structure we're providing prompt some writing development, right? So it, that's why uh, she promotes the uh, the kind of the structure for students to understand the prompt and then be able to add ideas to that. Have anybody heard about Gretchen Burnaby before? Let me see the chat box. She's done, no, great. She has done a lot of work with uh, writing. So think about this. A nursery rhyme, right? You you might use poetry as well because it, it, the structure is the same. It's it's it, the, you can use any text, any material, any writing, any any genre, any form. It's just a structure that we're gonna put in practice that it, it will help us develop. So in this case, we have little Miss Muffet, right? So you present it to the students, you read it with them. Little Miss Muffet sat on a taffet eating her curd same way. Along came a spider and sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. So you read it and then 
you uh, divide it or kind of box it the information into you know a structure. You put in a structure. Hey, little Miss Muffet sat on the top of it, eating her curds and way first. And of course, primary may have you know illustrations and drawings to illustrate what is happening. Then along came a spider who sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. Kind of now we have that a uh, nursery rhyme and put it in different boxes kind of a structure uh, showing the structure to the student and this is what she says uh Bernabe says in her book we may create a short story that says it just about uh think about a time when you experience a problem right because at this time what we want is our students to uh, think about ideas for them to develop in the writing. So think about a time when you experience a problem. So we wanted to write a short story. It's, it's very structured and guided at the beginning because that's what we're providing a lot of support at this time. Later on, you're gonna see how the students are able to develop more and add more. So what you were doing first then, but suddenly a problem came up that happened in the middle of the story and what you did about it. What was your response, right? You may definitely implement writing 311 with text structures for nursery rhyme. You have day one, day one, two, and three, in which you are using mentor text. You're consuming a lot of different nursery rhymes or a, a, poems or poetry, any type of genre that you want. And then you introduce the skills. What is it that I wanna focus on specifically with this uh, nursery rhyme? And then you have your share writing. That's the beginning that happened in the first three days. Day four, it's more guided. Is that intervention support in which you are providing, a, you know, assistance to your students and supporting it as they write more. Uh, it can happen in a small group, absolutely, yes. And then last day, you take it as the independent writing time is my assessment in which we're sharing and we're asking the students to um, share what they produce with this type of protocol. So I'm going to give you an example in which I modeled that in a first grade classroom. It was a bilingual classroom. So I have to, uh, of course, understand uh, not only, uh, you know, I, I, I needed to plan not only for students to, you know, learn the skills that I wanted to teach at that time, but also shelter instruction because the lesson was done in English. Uh, so day one is my, is my day in which I'm, I, you know, I'm presenting the skill, I'm teaching the skill to my students. So I will show them a clip, a video, in this case will be the nursery rhymes. I also will present it in a reading, you know, for students to read that and engage into the language and the vocabulary. I may do an echo reading with them and practice. Um, I read, you read, then we may do a chair reading and we all read together. Mm -hmm. That's That happened is in my day, day one. So here it is. I have uh, my students in the classroom and I'm, I'm showing them the nursery rhyme. It is important, especially in this case, bilingual students that they understand uh, not only what the, the, the story of these um, nursery rhymes is about, but also the language. So I wanted to engage the students in that language. At this time, I haven't even introduced a skill that I wanted to teach. Uh, I was just, you know, getting some um, uh, practice with the sound and, and the nursery rhyme and the, and the vocabulary. So, of course, we had the opportunity to go over and read it all together. Uh, I point out some important words. We kind of practice. We uh, did some TPR for students to understand when I was referring to Humpty Dumpty that they, you know, did 
some some kind of ideas and the horses and the fall and you are going to see it now in a video So that gives you an idea uh, of the activity I was trying to accomplish. In this case, first grade, I was trying to um, work with the students uh, and, and make sure they really understood uh, the vocabulary that I was uh, practicing at that moment. Day two. Day two was when I wanted to introduce the skill. So at this case, in, at that moment, I said, okay, I wanted to work on past tense. I wanted to focus on past tense. It could be any skill, honestly. With this, a nursery rhyme could be verbs, could be nouns, could be proper noun, could be possessive and contraction. So I just wanted, because that's the idea of this protocol, you just have to pick one skill and work and give them the time for students to master that. So um, in my case, I wanted to focus on past tense. So I went over the, the nursery rhyme and specifically poem past tense that they have and they use and we practice with them. Bilingual students needed that, especially at the first grade level. So, okay, um, I see it, you see it, she sits, he sat. In this case, I and point out and we practice and we repeat the sentence several times for the student. I have, you have, he, she has, but Dum Humpty Dumpty had because it happened in the past that was in the past in past tense. So it was saying couldn't put together again. So we did in main charts, we practiced what present means, past tense means we did a, a small preview in Spanish before jumping into, you know, what we have to do the lesson in past tense. And we practice and we provided some opportunities for the students to talk to their partners and say some samples. I asked the students to write sentences using several past tense, right? So I model it and then I let them do it and I pass out, you know, sticky notes for them to write their own sentences. The students were able to understand that, okay, today means present, yesterday means past tense. And they were able to write some of the, in their sticky notes, they were able to write some of the sentences. That was day two. Day three. It was my moment in which I wanted to do short writing, but at this moment, I wanted to use a structure for um, Humpty Dumpty, which is kind of a problem that this student, uh, he has. And I wanted to say, hey, we're gonna use this uh, structure be because our, now is our opportunity to create our own story. So I showed them the kernel, which is uh, at that moment, simple drawings, and I wanted them to use that text structure. 
where I was. Where I was was the beginning, then what went wrong, something went wrong, so a problem happened and where something went wrong and how bad it was. So we got ideas, brainstorm ideas, and we together did a sure writing. So I use the structure for like an accident, something happened, somebody got hurt. And I explain it, what that means. And she said, this is a structure we're gonna be using, what I was. So you need to tell me specifically where you were at that moment and then what went wrong, something went wrong because either you, know, you, you, you had an accident and you got hurt. And then tell me how bad it was. Uh, we got some ideas. And they start sharing, oh, I remember, yes, I, I had an accident when I was pulling off my bike, or I, I was at recess and I stepped on an empire, or I pushed my friend so hard. So as soon as you start sharing some of their own ideas, and we use some drawings, and then I model, I did the share writing, taking those ideas. And I said, okay, that morning I was happily riding my bike to school, I did not as the street was getting fixed. So I tripped and fell off the bike. I hurt my knee very badly. I cried so hard that the Coast Guard came to help me and took me to the school nurse. So I used this structure and model it and show my students how I can take ideas from the nursery rhyme to create my own story. Then of course, it, I use my drawings uh, with practices. We, the students were sharing ideas depending on um, you know, the topic that they decided to write, their own you know, accidents. And then I asked them to write. Chris, some of them started doing their own drawings. And here you have some examples of their drawings. Some of the students were able to um, uh, create and add some of the uh, language. Uh, they took some time to first create the images, the drawing, and then put the if text together. And you can see some of the examples right here. And then day four. Day four was my time to go over some of the details in their writing. I wanted to end them a pool small group. I had you know, advice or, or provide some guidance and and check some, uh, you know, it's it was my time to let the students write their own story following that kernel structure, but it was it was also my time to assess, make sure they were doing correctly, and if not, definitely monitor and adjust. So here are some, some of the writings that they were able to produce. Um, I was running to my house and I fell down. Uh, I didn't know that there was a rock in the street. And then of course, it, it, uh, I, they didn't finish. In this case, um, I was running, then I, I have it right here. I put it on a sticky because it takes me sometimes for me to understand this uh, primary writing, but uh, especially, you know, students are developing their English skills. So uh, I was running, then I tripped and I was crying with, I had blood. That's what the student, and it, you can easily see right here, blood on um, her knees. So at that moment, I understood my students learn the structure. And that was the main point. I wanted them to understand the structure in which they were developing the writing. Remember that structure can be easily modified depending on the uh, grade level, of course, that we are. And, and, and as we get the topics, the main ideas, remember that they, later these ideas are going to be developed and we add more details, okay, into the piece. At this time, I'm just finding, um, you know, the, uh, I'm just uh, getting basic ideas that will later add more into my writing. In this case, the student was in English, the students couldn't understand it, uh, and not couldn't understand, the students understood the lesson because we shelter a lot. However, uh, he didn't have the skills, English skills to be able to write, and he was able to write in Spanish. Yo me caí, me rompí la pierna, which means I, I fell off and, and, and hurt my knees or my leg. At this time, it's perfectly fine. I, I, that tells me, or at, at that moment, 
I, I knew that she didn't understood what I was trying to teach. And of course, following the structure. All the students spend a lot of time writing uh, their own individual pieces. And then of course came uh, day five in which we are giving ideas and the students were able to share. Uh, share time is um, it's an opportunity for us to, to uh, check our audience uh, to see. And, and that's why I kind of add this information here because this tells me uh, why should uh, writing uh, or sharing be a priority when we write? Why do we write? Um, we write to tell a story and we write because we know uh, we have an audience that we are going later to share with that audience, right? If the students are not allowed to share their, their work with an audience there, there is less motivation to write. So think about that uh, when we, even adults, when we know that um, we have, we're going to share a writing, we will put more emphasis in what we are writing because we're more intentional about the, the structure that we're using, the sentences that we're writing, because we know later we're going to share, right? That happened to us adults. And, 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 and this type of sessions have proved me that when uh, I tell my, my audience or my teachers, my participants, hey, we're going to share at the end of this writing um, time, uh, they're more intentional about what they are writing. So think about that and, and give your, your students an opportunity to always know you're going to be sharing this with a classmate, you're going to be sharing that at your table, or you're going to be sharing that with me, um, with the teacher. Also, uh, accountability. Think about, you know, uh, your expectations. What is it uh, you are going to share with a classmate? You are going to share with a, a teacher and the students, once they know that they're going to share, they feel accountable for their work. They have to uh, definitely produce it and, and, and do it and write more, right? Um, another um, um, clause that we may add to this is this, this, the sense of community sharing among, among peers on a daily basis helps to build a community. So we learn about each other's interests, families, and worries. It builds a group of students who appreciate each other. In elementary, which is uh, where I, um, you know, I spent uh, my years uh, of experience, definitely, definitely that motivates the students to be able to write more and add more to, uh, to their writing pieces. I love this piece, which is the revision. We haven't talked about revision uh, because at this time what we're pushing is for students to feel free to create and write ideas, right? It's just the beginning piece. Revision takes time. So, but often as the students share their work, they notice something they miss. And it is a natural form of revision and, uh, and helps with the revision process. So. Think about this, uh, they are listening and hearing others students sharing their writing pieces and they're getting ideas to add to their writing. That also it's a, a plus to, um, that I will probably later take and add it to my writing. Uh, and last but not least, it's a celebration. We're able to you know, compliment each other. Uh, we're able to uh, suggest ideas for them to write and add to their writing pieces and we also celebrate you know that the students are allowed to be able to to share more so those um all of these um facts help us to and and, and, and create a students a, a community a safe environment for sharing um when we use nursery rhymes and, 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 and there's not a time set, of course, every, every, every uh, district follows their curriculum, but, but uh, research suggests between one and two weeks for each rhyme, especially at the primary levels. So um, upper grade levels, uh, middle school, high school, of course, the topics are different. And, um, and the skills, of course, are different. And they, yes, we need 
probably do add more time to that, but lessons to develop independent writers. What can we do? We, we read a nursery or we show them a clip and or a poem and then uh, they take ideas for that. And then you ask them to, to you know, use those ideas to create some, some of the writing pieces. Uh, we do some echo reading. I read, you read, and we do the choral reading uh, of that nursery rhyme as well. Uh, we can do some, some share, share reading and we read it all together. We can add some discussions about, you know, what was the plot, what the character of the rhymes are, and we can get into some comprehension of this, this story. Uh, and later, you definitely can connect it with any writing activity showing that kernel. And, I, and, and um, we, have, we can come up with different ideas for the kernel that you wanted to use. Okay, you can do it as a class activity, and you can do a short writing to share the kernel, right, or the structure. Uh, you may create a small group and, and work in a small group to uh, revise the work and or you can ask the students to do it independently at their levels and that also helps them too. Do we have any questions so far? Let me check the chat box. Um, no questions? Okay, if you have questions, remember you may feel free to ask me, okay? In this case, what else can we use nursery rhymes? We, we use nursery rhymes so engage the students in vocabulary, but we also are helping and pushing to learn vocabulary, right? So uh, you may create your English arts and always add to that um, the English arts and help students use poetry and nursery rhymes in chance to develop language and vocabulary. In this case, it was a bilingual classroom and the students were learning English first grade. Um, think about this because um, when you think you're done with the writing, in this case, the students were able to use that as structure and put it in place and write and do some ideas. In what it's When we think we are done is when revision starts. Hey, no, you have just begun. Uh, at this time is when we're going to go back and, and, and revise our work and, and work in, and teach the students some revisions protocols. Uh, we want them to think about your writing, what you wrote, think about adding new words, think about adding colors, adjectives, think about adding details. So at the primary levels, of course, you, you, you guided the process and it takes a lot of time for students to understand that they need to go back and add and revise what they wrote. Um, at this time, I have an exit ticket in which I will love for, for you guys just to check. Think about this. Think about the 311 protocol. And I want you to uh, pick one. Either I'm excited to explore uh, and finish the sentence. I used to think that writing, blah, 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 blah. But now I think that blah, 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 after hearing 311. I want you to think how you can implement at your grade level writing 311. Um, Think about what was your biggest learning coming today into this session, uh, committing your Saturday just to learn more about literacy. And then I would love to, to hear if you still have some questions and how can I best support you and help you. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a few minutes for you to, um, to uh, answer some of these uh, exit tickets. Okay, so we can definitely discuss it. Oh goodness, excuse me. <laughs>
Okay, I can see your messages. Great. Uh, I look forward to plan some ways to think about adding some of the interactive writing where the students and I are both writing at the same time. That's great. And, and remember, we're modeling uh, the way we want the students to write. That's the best way for them to learn. So um, that definitely uh, will you know, give you good results if you implement it. Uh, Consistently, you have to be very consistent and intentional in you know what the skill that you want to teach, and then uh, you know offer multiple opportunities for students to practice that. Um, another comment here: I'm excited to explore the book you mentioned. Yes, nursery rhymes. Uh, from, um, Gretchen Bernabe, as it is a new text. Uh, yes, and she has for poetry. She has for not nursery rhymes. She has uh, another one for um, her fables. So uh, different structures for uh, to promote writing development, and and it's awesome. That helps too. Uh, let me see. Uh, um, yes, for kindergarten students, yes, very very powerful. Um, and and the structure allows the students to understand you know, the writing process, you know, we, we are adding details, uh, we are writing uh, or, or using uh, our ideas to produce some type of message and that's very important for them too. Yes, I would love to share the presentation, of course. Uh-huh. I will put it in the chat, okay? Give me a few minutes after the presentation and I'll definitely share it with you. Oh, you're excited to uh, explore writing 311, great. Using mentor text. I have, I, I have done it in primary, first kinder. I also uh, have practiced it in, in upper grade levels, fourth and fifth grade. Uh, and yes, it is, uh, it, it works. You can uh, put it in practice with any of your skills, any tick that you want to, uh, to practice. And a small groups, very, very powerful too. Great. Oh, I love adding additional opportunities for a students sharing time. Yes, yes. And that give you uh, or give students ideas for later for them to develop uh, or add it to their writings. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it is, it just, um, sometimes it helps us be more organized into our writing, into our writing lessons, right? When we're planning, making sure, okay, if I'm doing it within this week, if I'm working on this skill, particular skill, this is how I wanted to do it. Um, yes, to break in the writing down in, in pieces, absolutely helps. Um, do I have any questions from my audience today? Do you have any questions that um, that you perhaps can think about it? I'm going to uh, put my email right here. Uh, feel free to email me in, if you need uh, the presentation. I'll be happy to put it in a, in a kind of format, easy format for you to share with your team members, okay? Um, this is, uh, let me check my email right here. There you go. <clears throat> well, if I don't have any more questions, I have to say that um, it was my pleasure to be with all of you today uh, on a Saturday. Um, I hope this session, um, you know, uh, brought something that is sparks about writing uh, and, and, and give you, you know, um, uh, the opportunity to think about writing in a different way, having an easy structure to put in practice right on Monday, okay? Um, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, enjoy your weekend. 
uh, you have my email, save it, send me an email. I'll be happy to send you the presentation, okay? For the structure for write, writing 311. If I don't have any more questions, thank you so much for your time and enjoy, have a beautiful weekend. I hope to see you soon, bye. Thank you, Omali. And thank you to everyone who joined us today. We hope to see you again next year for chapter four. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.